Hello and welcome to Brave New Foundation's Rethink Afghanistan debate series. Today I'm joined by Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor of The Nation, and Lawrence Korb, a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. Katrina and Lawrence, here's the question for today's debate. As we've seen in recent news, Pakistan seems to be becoming less and less stable. Will sending additional U.S. troops to Afghanistan help to stabilize Pakistan, or will it contribute to further destabilization? Lawrence, you won our coin flip, so we'll start with you. You have one minute. Well, I think sending more troops is going to help stabilize uh, Pakistan, because if we can route out the, uh, the Taliban people in Afghanistan, particularly in the eastern part of the country, they will no longer be able to uh, get money from the drug trade in Afghanistan to fund their uh, operations in Pakistan. They'll no longer be able to go back and forth across the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan and cause uh, problems, uh, uh, cause problems for them. And I think it will also undermine those people in Pakistan with their intelligence services who are, have created and have been supporting the Taliban all these years. And once we do that, I think it will enable the civilians to gain more control of the government in Pakistan. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll go to Katrina for your one minute opening. I believe that expanding the U.S. military occupation will only deepen the divisions inside Pakistan and further weaken its already fragile democratic government. Already the effect of military operations in Afghanistan has been to push Islamicists across the border into tribal areas and Pakistan's northwest frontier province. And you, Lawrence mentioned the intelligence services. They see in Afghanistan, they're funding the resurgent Taliban because they see it as a proxy against greater Indian influence. We need to put this crisis into the geopolitical situation. Finally, as the U.S. uses these pilotless drones with the terrible collateral civilian damage, it is fueling anti-Americanism. It is fueling anger at the weak, fragile, democratic Pakistani government. There has to be, again, I come back to targeted economic development and a focus on regional diplomacy and strong and common sense counter terrorism measures. That right. is what will work to stabilize a nuclear armed country, which should be our focus and okay. not occupying Afghanistan. Thank you very much, Katrina. We'll now go to Lawrence for your one minute response. <clears throat> Sending troop, more troops to Afghanistan to help stabilize that country and prevent it from destabilizing the region is not going to solve the problem in Pakistan. The United States needs to have what we call the uh, the Kerry Luger bill, which will provide uh, a floor under economic and aid to Pakistan over the next five years, because previously we've had this on again, off again relationship with Pakistan. A lot of the aid we've given them has ended up uh, getting military for uh, military equipment to deal with India. And finally, I think we need to convince them that this Taliban, which they've created, is not only a threat to Afghanistan, but it's also a threat to them. And I think they're coming uh, increasingly to realize that. All right. You thank know, you. And Katrina, think, for your uh, one minute. Larry, Larry is right uh, in one way about the importance of more non-military assistance. But we need to redirect the U.S. military assistance toward economic assistance, which would strengthen the popular appeal of the Pakistani and Afghan governments if we demilitarize. I think what we're seeing is in the U.S. occupation also exacerbating tensions in South Asia, where the Kashmir conflict and Mumbai have posed a situation where nuclear armed Pakistan and India are at each other's throats. We need, again, to demilitarize. And it just, it, the, the occupation of Afghanistan makes very little sense when Al Qaeda forces are roaming freely in Pakistan. So why we're focused on escalating in Afghanistan instead of, again, the targeted regional diplomacy, the hard slog work that would stabilize regional and U.S. and international security 
is something American people deserve a debate about and deserve answers to because we have it and we don't see an exit strategy. An escalation can be a very slippery slope. All right. Thank you very much, Katrina. You'll each now have 30 seconds to sum up your argument. Uh, Lawrence, please go ahead. Well, just because you're sending more troops to Afghanistan doesn't mean you're going to ignore the other components of our national security policy. You need a comprehensive regional strategy that focuses on social and economic development as well as dealing with the security situation. But as Stuart Bowen, who was the Special, special Inspector General for Iraq, has pointed out, unless you get security, you can't have development. All Even right. if and U.S. Katrina. escalation could achieve the limited objectives of denying al-Qaeda presence in Afghanistan, it could lead to the destabilization of uh, Pakistan with devastating implications for the region and international security, as Andrew Basevich, a retired ar army colonel, has argued. I am not saying that the United States withdraws from the region. I am arguing that the smart, targeted regional diplomacy and intelligence cooperation, those should be the priorities of an Obama administration rather than sending more young men and women to die in the mountains of Afghanistan. Thanks for joining us for today's debate. And thanks, of course, to our debaters, Katrina Vanden Heuvel and Lawrence Korb. Visit us online at RethinkAfghanistan.com for more videos and debates. What questions do you want answered about the war in Afghanistan? Submit the questions you would like to have answered in congressional hearings at RethinkAfghanistan.com.